SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My name is Adolf Giesen and I'm director of the Institute of Technical Physics of the German Aerospace Center located in Stuttgart. And this institute is DLR's laser institute dealing with high power lasers, beam control, pointing, tracking, imaging applications, especially for uh, space and aircraft uh, applications, but also security applications. In 91, at LEOS conference, uh, I heard a talk from T.Y. Fan from the MIT, and he talked about Euterbium Yek as a very, very promising laser material. But he ended his talk with a statement that uh, if you know how to bring the waste heat out of the crystal. You can build a real high power laser system, but nobody knows. And on my flight from the United States to Japan, I made the first calculations. And when I came back to Stuttgart, I told people that I know what we are doing. We are starting with a new design for uh, solid state lasers, especially for Euterbium Yek. And this, this was the beginning. And within three months, uh, I developed with a group of my students and one guy from the German Aerospace Center uh, what we call now the Syndisk laser. So it was developed till end of March uh, 1992. And the first demonstration was realized in summer uh, 2003. And a little bit later when we demonstrated uh, for the first time more than 100 watt out from one single disc, they invited me to talk with all their technicians in the company and at the end of this talk in the evening they told me okay we will give you some money for this development and we will start development too and this was the beginning of uh, the success of Trumpf and at the same time also Yenoptik static started working on Syndisk lasers and uh, they, so far Yenoptik sold more than 10,000 uh, pieces, 10,000 lasers, for, especially for the medical market. Trumpf came a, bit, a little bit later because of the high power stuff and they needed a little bit more time, but they are selling lasers since 2003. And uh, today I heard uh, in the talk this morning that Trumpf sold uh, more than 700 multi-kilowatt systems so far. This was possible because of the German policy at this time. There was a guy in the ministry, or uh, BMBF now, and this guy decided laser technology may be of interest for Germany in future as a strategic uh, decision. And uh, he supported laser technology very, very much. Uh, we had the projects called Laser 2000 and so on. And within these projects, he brought institutes and industry together. And he said he's funding not only institutes, he's funding only collaborations between institutes and industry. And this helps a lot uh, to bring uh, the technology to the market. This laser is, uh, by principle, a very, very simple design. So it's a very thin disk. There's not so much material. Uh, in the laser cavity and therefore the distortions are very, very low compared to any other uh, design. And uh, in my lectures, when I start talking about solid state lasers, uh, I explain how to scale power. In principle, if you would like to build a high power laser, then you have a laser active material and you know the power per volume coming out. And you, you have two ways to scale the power. One way is to increase the amount of mass of material, or you can increase the power density, the power per volume. And fiber lasers and uh, thin disk lasers are just the second way. Uh, second way. So both uh, designs are using sc or scaling the power per volume, which is for both designs about one megawatt per cubic centimeter extracted output power. Uh, so you do not need so much uh, volume per uh, power. And uh, this is very important because this relaxes all the uh, 
negative effects like distortion, phase distortion, aberration and fracture. Our calculations show that it is easily possible to demonstrate more than, let me say, 20 to 50 kilowatt per single disk. And combining several disks, of course, uh, gives you the possibility for nearly any power in future. So the problem for the disk or the hard point of the disk is uh, beam quality. So uh, for the disk laser, it's easy to scale power just by increasing the diameter of the pump area of the disk. The, but with this, if you do this, then it uh, becomes harder and harder uh, to keep the laser mode in, uh, or the laser running in fundamental mode. And uh, therefore, uh, concepts for high power uh, operation with extremely good beam quality are not that easy for the disc laser. But we are working on that and I'm sure that we have a solution which brings us to that point, let me say, 10, more than 10 or 20 kilowatt fundamental mode operation within the next two or three years.